Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar, the channel where you can learn about new concepts in physics and astronomy. I am your host, Dr. Robitaille. Today I want to once again continue to present some of the most easily visualized proofs that the photosphere has a real surface. If you want to learn more about some of these proofs, you should refer to this paper, which is also linked down below. One of the simplest proofs of the presence of a true solar surface involves activity which we see on the Sun. The Sun is characterized in numerous scientific texts as boiling or as a boiling gas. If you want to see some references, just examine the footnote on page 19 of this paper. I always smile when I see scientists speak of a boiling gas when referring to solar activity. Even NASA has said solar plasma emitted from the Sun is a boiling off of the Sun's atmosphere. Now does it make sense to characterize a gaseous plasma as boiling off of a gaseous plasma? Of course not. Scientists are ascribing properties to a gas which belong exclusively to the liquid. Finally, let's talk about the extent of the chromosphere above the photosphere. The problem for solar physicists is that it is nearly impossible for the standard solar model to account for the great height of the chromosphere. This model tries to tell us that the chromosphere of the Sun is just a few thousand kilometers thick, when it is clearly not. Professor Harold Zirin was a man who clearly understood the need to fit theory to evidence. He highlighted this when he addressed this problem. Years ago, journals were filled with discussions of the height of the chromosphere. It was clear that the apparent scale height of a thousand kilometers far exceeded that in hydrostatic equilibrium. In modern times, a convenient solution has been found, denial. Although anyone can measure its height with a ruler and find it to extend to 5,000 kilometers, most publications state that it becomes corona at 2,000 kilometers above the surface. We cannot explain the great height or the erroneous models. While models say 2,000 kilometers, the data say 5,000. Zirin wrote those words in 1996. Yet still today, NASA insists that the chromosphere only extends to 2,500 kilometers above the solar surface. We also measure evidence of chromospheric emission lines all the way up to heights of 14,000 kilometers or more. This creates a huge problem for the standard model of the Sun, since this model depends on hydrostatic equilibrium, which can't explain the height of the chromosphere. Watch this video if you'd like to learn more about hydrostatic equilibrium. So what is holding up the chromosphere if the Sun is gaseous and if the photosphere has an average density of only 2 times 10 to the minus 7 grams per centimeter cubed. It is clear that a gaseous photosphere has no means of holding up the chromosphere in the standard model. However, if the photosphere of the Sun is condensed matter, then all problems relative to the height of the chromosphere disappear. The photosphere can support the chromosphere using gas pressure in the same way that the atmosphere of the Earth is supported above its surface. Again, gas pressure requires a real surface, and it is critical to accounting for the extent of the chromosphere. That requirement is easily met if the photosphere is a real surface. You might recall how the standard model attempted to use electron gas pressure to prevent the Sun from collapsing on itself. I objected to this argument based on the fact that gas pressure requires a real surface and none can be found in the standard model of the Sun. But in the actual Sun, it is clear that a real surface exists at the level of the photosphere. That is why gas pressure can be invoked to hold up the chromosphere once the Sun is recognized as condensed matter. Before closing, let us briefly discuss one more aspect of the chromosphere, structures called spicules. You can see what spicules look like in this video. In the standard model, spicules are thought to be jets of plasma which are being pushed into the chromosphere at velocities of about 20 kilometers per second. They have average diameters of about 500 kilometers. But the situation is actually more complex than simple jets of plasma. Spicules can rise to certain heights, stop, and expand again violently. They also follow arbitrary paths and are not simply orthogonal to the solar surface. 
In any case, spicule formation is definitely contrary to the suggestion that a gaseous sun can be in hydrostatic equilibrium. You can read more about spicules in this paper. Father Angelo Secchi first described spicules in the chromosphere in the mid-1800s when he wrote, In general, the chromosphere is poorly terminated and its external surface is garnished with fringes. It is almost always covered with little nets terminated in a point and entirely similar to hair. Even then, Secchi warned that these structures were not optical illusions. There is no illusion to worry about. The phenomena that we have just exposed to the reader are not simple optical findings, but objects which really exist, faithfully represented to our eyes using instruments employed to observe them. What remains true about spicules is that they are supported on the solar surface. Even the idea that they are simple jets of plasma requires a condensed photosphere in order to build up pressure to drive the such jets. We are not witnessing just simple objects in hydrostatic equilibrium unsupported by the photosphere. At the same time, spicules might actually owe their growth to condensation reactions and may not be plasma jets. We will learn more about this possibility when we discuss the chromosphere in detail in the future. In closing, I hope that you liked this short video relative to the true surface of the sun and will join me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below. I'll see you soon on our next video.